Hello, Internet people. My name is Ryan, your name is Internet People, and this is the seventh time I've attempted to do this intro. I'm exceptionally sleepy today. Um, I just got back from the grocery store. I bought cranberry soda. It's not even really soda, it's just sort of cranberry juice. It's not even juice, because I got the diet one, so I honestly, I don't even know what it's sweetened with. It tastes like cranberries, though, so that's good. Right? Anyway, I'm going to start talking about something interesting. Um, a sawubona, by the way. Um, first things first, a little bit of news, um, uh, I don't know if you noticed, but my name changed, and, uh, that was after last internet people, I think I did, almost immediately afterwards. Um, we're back to the name that my channel used to have. If anyone gets that reference, thumbs up. Thumbs right up your butt. Um, but now attached to a Google Plus page, which you should all go and follow. <laughs> no one uses Google Plus, and it's sad because it's really fancy now. They made it have the same UI as the uh, as the phone and the tablet version, so it's all like cards everywhere, and shit spins like the Norton uh, antivirus user interface, which spins. By the way, in this video game video that you're watching, which I've talked not about for the last minute and a half, um... We're gonna. F the game is fin finishing. This is the end of the game. This is the last thing. I still. I'm missing a heart piece. I have no idea where I'm gonna get that heart piece from. But yeah, isn't that exciting? Game's almost over. It's not exciting. I guess I still have to decide what game to play. I'm kind of down on three. I'm kind of down on a bunch of decisions right now. Max Payne three is one. Uh, Wind Waker is another, and. Uh, Mother 3. So I know Takobi is no Mother 3. But the rest of you can just fight it out. Amongst yourselves. And I'll play that for the next... However long. Um, yes. So that's the news. I got it out of the way. I managed to do it 2 minutes 17 seconds. This would be another failed intro. But I'm not doing a 17th. I'm not doing like an 8th intro. This is it. This is what you get. Um, maybe I should do a horrible cringe video, um, in which you get to hear every single one of my failed videos, because it records them all. It, it um, because I do it right in Adobe Premiere, and I notice I actually found a big pile of them just in this weird folder, and there's just all sorts of, every single time I, um, audio record something in Premiere, it sits, sticks it in there. Very interesting. Um, I haven't listened to any of them. I feel like, I feel like they might be not bad. Like, I feel like they might be fun to listen to. Anyway, let's read some comments. Um, Unique Technique. Un oh, that's a good name. His name is... It, it, it's spelled weird. That's a good name. Thumbs up. Jesus Christ. How did your name be so good at everything and everyone else's name be just their real name? Because Google's Plus has been, like, badgering people. Horrifyingly to put their real name on. Um... Apparently, I should take a listen to the Adam and Drew podcast, because it's funny stuff. Sure. Okay. Throw that in there. I'm actually at the point now where I'm not... I'm listening to podcasts slower than they're coming out. Like, before I used to be catching up, but now I'm not, because I have too many. Um, so I'm starting to uh, trim the cruft. Um, I just dumped Jordan Jesse Go. Um, Bullseye is on the chopping block. Uh, we'll see. A couple of news podcasts that are incredibly boring. Anyway, I'm subscribing right now to the Adam and Drew. I hope it's good. Speaking of podcasts, I listened to the what was it? The uh, me and my moo suggested. Uh, what was it? It's horrible. It's the hor. It's a, the horrible podcast. We're just gonna call it that. It has an actual name. It's a podcast about being terrible, and that that one actually wasn't. Awful. Um, am I looking for the Adam and Dr. Drew show? That seems to be... There's Drew and Mike. Are you sure it didn't mean Drew and Mike? Um, how about the uh, trans talk show? Transgendered... Transgender... It's just scrolling really slow. Transgender topics. Well, that was useless. Um, this podcast was created using TalkShoe.com. Talk... Sh okay. I'm going to assume it's the Adam and Dr. Drew show. I'm going to register that. What's this shit happening on the screen right now? Look at this. Look at this. This is a good cutscene, actually. 
I'm gonna spoil this a little bit. Actually, no. After this cutscene is over, I'll talk about it a little bit. I'm just subscribed. Okay, I've subscribed to the Adam Doctor Tree. I hope it's not garbage. Still haven't listened to a Rooster Teeth one yet. Um, and then made my moves as Happy Face. Oh, well, Happy Face to you too. I may, I'm, I'm I'm smiling right now. You can't you can't see it because I'm. I, this isn't. The, no, I don't. I don't have a camera. Well, I have a camera, but it's not an appropriate camera. Anyway, this is literally the purpose of me going to each of those dungeons, was to get these guys. Look at this. But this sort of stuff, like this sort of visual that you're seeing right now, think about it, it doesn't happen on the Nintendo 64 very often. They really leveraged um, the uh, the expansion pack. If, you, if, if anyone knows anything about the Nintendo 64, um, it, used to, it, it came with, I think, two megabytes of RAM, um, and then you would buy, like, like they came up with a little, like, pack um, that you stick in the top of the console, and that upgrades your RAM to 4 megabytes, and then that is required for a few games like Majora's Mask um, and, like, Donkey Kong 64. So I think Donkey Kong 64 typically came with it. But that extra RAM... Um, oh, and there's lots of games that used it. Like, Perfect Dark, for instance, you needed it for some portions of it. Like, a lot of games just worked not as well, or we're missing content if you didn't have the expansion back. Like, Rush 2049 was another one. Um, but... What was I saying? Uh, they leveraged this content, or they leveraged that extra RAM really well, because Termin of Field, like, if you remember Ocarina of Time's, like, Hyrule Field was such a fucking, like, mess. Like, it was, not, it was about the same size as this one, to be honest. Um, except it just didn't have nearly as much stuff in it. And they really managed to do a good job with it and with Terminal Field there to do that cutscene. And I was, I, I don't know, I just wanted to say I'm super impressed with how they handled it. Like, technically, Majora's Mask is a cool game that way. Um, there's just the fact that they can do those faraway shots. Look at this, everything's great. We've beaten everything, everything is over. Oh, but something horrible is going to happen right now, right? Because otherwise, this video would only be seven minutes long. But there's, okay, just as a spoiler, um, there's, uh, if your time runs out, I probably should have put them in the video, but I'm too lazy. If anyone wants to see them, just ask, and I'll, I'll go into the game, and I'll do it. But the, uh, there's a couple extra scenes you can get in this. Um, ooh, what's, what's happening? Ooh, ooh. This game. Jesus Christ. <laughs> I just I can't talk right now. I have to watch this cutscene because it is fucking intense. This shit gave me nightmares. Nightmares when I played it originally. Alright, alright, let's just talk about this. Let's talk about this for a sec. What are we looking at right now? This is like, you know, and I knew exactly that this was going to happen when I played it, but every single time it's kind of a little bit, a bit of a fuck you. Like, what is this? Is a nice, pleasant field? There's some kids running around. Uh oh. The whole thing, just just so, just so you are all uh, thoroughly spoiled, you just go do a little mini game and you get a, a heart piece. Um, 
a little mini dungeon. Anyway, but you have to give them all your masks. This is the whole thing. Like you give these kids masks and they do shit. Um, anyway, what I what I wanted to say before is there's really cool cutscenes for when the moon hits um, Termina. Like there's one if you if your time just expires and then the moon just comes down. There's also ones where if you haven't beaten every boss and you call them from the um, from the top of the clock tower and then only a few of them come. It's kind of the same cutscene as if you just let it expire, except they except they come out and they try and hold it but they can't, and then it, and then everything dies. It's it's like it's it's cool. Like the, I don't know, this game is just this this game, this game is just fantastic. And yes. Uh, anyway, let's read some comments. Let's uh, we gotta get through a lot. Look at this. I've already managed to talk about literally nothing for ten minutes. Um, Jeremy McSquire as a voice uh, as a vote for. Fuck you. No, not fuck you, Jeremy McSquire. Um, as a vote for Mother Three, I guess because you can't get the English patchwork working. Really, I thought it was fairly easy. Um, I like I I was actually surprised. The English patch for Mother Three is. The mo like it, it was just like the most professional thing I think I've ever really experienced um, in one of the like like the most professional fan made thing I think I've ever fan made video game related thing. So there's lots of really cool fan made stuff out there, of course, but like 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 software that's that's on par, if not m more better than if not more better than than what the original people could do than what the the, uh, the original developers could do. Because think about it, like the Mother Three fan or translation is is nigh perfect. Like there there was nothing in it where I read it and it was like this seems out of place. It seems was like it was written by an amateur. Everything just felt like like Earthbound really. But I guess this is a great topic of conversation for people who may or may not have been playing Earthbound or Mother Three. So yes. Fan translation is great. I never had any problems with it. Let's move on. I'll probably play that game, even though Jacoby really doesn't want me to because of capitalism or something. Um, <laughs> I don't remember. Jacoby suggests Chrono Trigger is such a great game. I'd love to see it graced by your voice. That's a weird thing. Don't say things like that. <laughs> it makes me feel weird. That's like that's like if someone came to you on the bus and it's like, yeah. You're you're you got a you got a, you got a pretty mouth and a pretty voice comes out of it. Mm -mm. Um, anyway, Mother Three, Jacoby continues. On the other hand, not so much. I know it's just me. Yeah, it's just you. But the in-your-face environmentalist and capitalism is so bad. Messages of that franchise are not really my cup of tea. It's just that they're not very subtle in bringing in the message along. So I prefer Chrono Trigger. Oh, you don't play that game for hey look. I totally forgot the purpose of going in here, and I don't find the kid. The purpose of this is to play, this is a hide and seek game, you find a kid. And I just didn't do that at all. Because I'm slightly dumb. I come back in here later. I'm not cutting any of that out, because otherwise I won't have enough, have enough time to talk about these comments. Um, yeah, no, I, the message in, in that is, it's not the greatest message. But it, it, you, you can just take it at face value, Mother 3, easily. Like, it's not necessarily that capitalism is awful, it's just that, uh, you know, Porky's capitalism is awful, if that makes any sense. Like, there is that, the, like, there is the future town in which everyone is kind of doing pretty okay, right? With the beach and shit. I don't know. Let's continue on. Uh, Takobi, uh, says, continues to say, Please no Bioshock Infinite. The game's not very good. As usual for Bioshock franchise, the makers pretend to be balanced and to paint each side as equally guilty, but through subtle messages, tricks, and gimmicks, one side comes off worse than the other. And they stole a huge chunk of their story from the ancient Greek myth of uh, Oedipus the King and the, and the novel Homo Faber by Mark Frisch. Oh, that was marked with spoilers. Um, I'm sure that anyone who... I, I feel like the sort of people who, who care a lot about Bioshock probably aren't the same people that care a lot about um, uh, Oedipus. Uh, and, and Max Frisch. I don't know if I'm pronouncing any of these right. Frisch? I don't know. Uh, oh, fuck. I just... You sp spoiled it for me. Now it's ruined, apparently. Uh, spoiler for anyone for the next two seconds. Uh, apparently Bioshock Infinite has time travel in it. Oh, Christ. Braga. Braga, 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 Braga. Did you know that Brandon Braga 
Um, he's a writer from one of the Star Trek. You know, he wrote good episodes, and then they they gave him more edit like editorial power, and then he started being a shit face. Um, very interesting. He should never have been put in charge of anything. Anyway, so Bioshock Infinite apparently isn't that great. But the thing is, is I think like what what this is. I think this is the same thing as we argue about television. Argue is I probably is too strong a word, but. Um, I think it's the same thing where, like, it's, these are, these are character-based games, I think. These are character-based plots, character plots, character face, character right in the... So close. So very close. And yet, so very far into this bottomless pit. Um, no, like, like, you can't, especially stuff like Bioshock Infinite, like, how integral is that plot? Really, like, how integral is that? Is that heavy-handed plot? Even in Bioshock One, where it wasn't as like I think Bioshock One probably had a lot to do with its heavy-handed, you know, plot about you know how horrible everything is. But the plot is is you know also a character drama, and the parts that are character drama are very very good. Like, Bioshock, for instance, wouldn't be anywhere near what it was if it didn't have the um, the tapes that you pick up and you, and you listen to. And those tapes just make the world come alive, right? Like, even if you don't have real characters in the... Like, I, 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 I felt like all the characters you interacted with in the... Um, uh, like, like, NPCs weren't... Maybe not, you know, shallow. I think shallow is probably the, or not probably, but definitely the wrong word. But they're just not as interesting as the kind of like little echoes in time that they left you everywhere. And you know, really, if e even even if even if it, the plot hadn't been so centric on all of that, like even if it hadn't been so centric on the. Um, the, literally the politics of it. I think they they still could have managed. They still could have managed uh, the, the magic that they managed if they were to just continue. If they were to just focus on those, you know, those people in those situations, right? Like that. I like that girl that you followed through like through the whole game. You followed this girl. Um, I can't remember what her name was, but you know, you kind of see her her ups and downs, and I think she eventually, I think she died? I think she ends up dying? But you never see her, because she's dead. You know, years before. You are, years before you ever enter Rapture. And I'm, and you know, I, I don't know, because I, because I, I basically mums the word on everything Bioshock Infinite, but, um, I, I would imagine that it's, it's remarkably similar. Like, I, I would imagine that the characters probably play, or play a large part. A larger part than, you know, the message. Anyway, let's continue to read some stuff. Uh, since there are so few comments today, I'll use a chance to talk about a European institution that is about to repeat itself tomorrow, the Eurovision Song Contest. I will not bother you with unnecessary history or recent controversies. If you want to look that up, the Wikipedia and the contest official homepage provide some good compact insight. Of relevance for you as a Canadian should be that Celine Dion won the contest in 1988. Why would Celine Dion ever win any contest of any kind? Alright, let's continue. Um... Kobe says. The contest is basically Europe in a nutshell. It's mediocrity uh, by simultaneous delusions of grandeur. It's emasculated harmlessness. It's campiness and fakeness. It's display of copious amounts of human skin. Sterile, without any erotic. It's feigned joy and happiness. It's outward display of European unity being undermined and thwarted by petty rivalries. And the notorious block voting, and of course the paternalistic nannyism, manifest in the recently reintroduced juries, patronizing the European viewers, televoters, and license payers. I still don't know what this is. It's a song contest? What kind of song contest? Um, here are some freakish entries of this year as a sample. Belarus Soilo by Aliona Le Oh, Christ. You're linking me to videos. You can't do that. I'm not going to watch them while I'm doing this. <laughs> I normally would, but I'm doing this, like, literally, 
like minutes before I have to go to sleep. And those minutes where I would have to download the thing, sink it into the... It's, it's such a pain in the ass, and I'm too lazy. You know what? If anyone is interested to see um, these people with Eastern European names do things, Jogobi's comment is, is uh, right there for you to go back and enjoy. Um, anyway, the epitome of fakeness sounds and looks like it belongs in a bad Disney movie. Or a fan with Lloyd Webber had decided to rape the Wizard of Oz. Oh, gross. And, ye oh, man. You know what? That guy behind the curtain. Um, or the, you know what? I think he was better before the curtain with the big booming voice and the giant head. Something right up to Star Trek. You know what? I would love to just uh, uh, cr uh, crawl into that mouth. I don't even know what I'm saying. Um, but I'm sure you would never want a boner when I see it, am I right? Mm, yeah. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm so fucking sorry right now about just about everything. Just about for everything that I'm saying. Uh, because me trying to find the kid, by the way, I don't remember how. I don't, didn't remember where he was. And now that I know where he was, the fact that I went all the way here again is very frustrating. Um. Anyway. Uh, oh, if you don't want to watch the other clips, okay, but you have to watch this one. I've chosen the rehearsal over the video clip, where he tries to overcompensate for his uh, castrato-like falsetto by performing lots of boy macho stuff because of his costume and constant money. He must be very constipated. Oh, Christ. You know what? Fine. Fine. Okay. I'm gonna do this. <laughs> I don't... I would like you to know that I have lost sleep now because I had to go and download that in order to edit it or edit it so seamlessly into this video. And it was that was so terrible. I just don't I okay. Look, okay, let's 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 compare let's compare Canada. Canada knows that it isn't very good at anything. So what ends up happening is they just go, "What American thing, or what Amer or what thing of ours does America like the most? Let's just slap. Let's just slap a, a an award on that. So what ends up happening is just Nickelback wins all the time." <laughs> Because so we have the Junos, and yeah, Nickelback wins. Is, isn't that isn't that unfortunate? Uh, Avril Lasagna. Oh god, she's a skater boy. <laughs> she said, "See you later, boy." Um, but she's gonna come back down to earth, or whatever. I don't even know. That might not be the lyric. Uh oh. Oh, also, I'm pretty sure we are responsible for Rebecca Black. Oh, <sighs> but we we don't have that. So, yes, just saying. I hope that guy wins. Uh, he's, he's very uh, flat-chested. Uh, <laughs> anyway. Uh, Jacoby continues. So if you don't have anything better to do on Saturday, why not have a laugh at Europe? Saturday, May 18th at 8 p.m. Um, or UTC should be around 1 p.m. in your time zone. No, I will definitely be asleep at that time. Um, why would I watch that anyway? Anyway. Uh, P.S. They all sing live. Only the music is pre-recorded. That is... Oh, God. That's so unfortunate. I'm glad I know about it. And I'm glad that I won't have to ever see it. 
Uh, anyway. Tarquinus says... Tarquinus 88. Oh, look at this. You're becoming a paragraph person. I love paragraph people. Best for 97 used to be a paragraph person. He disappeared, though. Quite sad. Um, Tarquinus says, I definitely preferred Fallout 3 over New Vegas. Um, by the way, Brotherhood of Steel leader was named Lions, I think. Yeah, that sounds about right. Um, for me, the constant freezes and crashes on New Vegas made the game nigh unplayable for me. Then again, I was playing the console version. As you can imagine, this took the multiple playthroughs to get the different achievements out of the question. The endings went, a lot, uh, went on a little too long for my taste. Let's talk about Chivos. Let's talk about... Oh, by the way, I'm really sorry, but I lost a bunch of content there. It was nothing interesting. It was just a lot of jumping through shit and fighting stupid enemies. Um, you just fight the Iron Knuckle again. Eh, whatever. Um, anyway. What was I saying? Yes. The Chivos. Let's talk about Chivos for a moment. The only game um, I have made an attempt to get all the achievements for is Rock Band 2. Not Rock, not even Rock Band 3 or Rock Band 1. I think Rock Band 1, I kind of gave it a, a half ass try and then gave up. Um, but I don't know, something about achievements that just isn't interesting anymore. And they were super interesting in Rock Band 2, but I think that's just because that's a game that is literally the purpose of it is for you to just replay it over and over again. Um, and I don't know, I just don't play games enough. I think I also gave GTA 4 a good shot, too. But GTA 4 is too big. Like, I feel if your game takes you 40 hours to finish, like, just to finish, achievements, you should be able to reasonably get all the achievements during that 40 hours. Like, like it's a fucking 40-hour game. Do you really need to make it longer? Christ. Oblivion achievements. Like, getting... Get all the nerd nerds. F fuck you, Oblivion. Fuck you right in the arse. No, don't... Don't don't put your penis in Oblivion's arse. Oh, God. Just think. Daedric God of Rape, or whatever. What's his name? Malakath, I think. Is he, is he the rape one? I'm pretty sure. Anyway, going back to a topic I touched on earlier. Darkwind S88 says... Or you touched. We touched. We both. Uh, uh, me and Tarquinus88 touch each other. Um, sorry to kind of out us there, but we. Uh, every, everything. The, lots of touching happens. Um, via the internet. Via the new Google Hangouts. Um, we do it. Uh, oh, God. So many touching and uh, poking. Oh, yes. Uh, <laughs> I said. Ryan said. Um, I said. Tar okay, Tarquinus is saying you said serialized television was the best type of entertainment, or at least leagues better than movies. Seeing as I'm not a big fan of either anymore due to rehashes and recycle concept, how many cop who doesn't play by the rules or deadpan snark or forensics agents shows do we really need to have on TV, especially here in America where they're fired out of every studio's ridiculous anus every season? The only thing that has brought me back to television somewhat, and I'm sure plenty of people here are going to laugh at me for this, are Spanish soap operas. <laughs> That was unexpected. Uh, mainly because of the way they're aired. There's no concept of seasons, which means you have a new episode every night, but it follows a linear storyline, so no single episode is self-contained, which I know you said you enjoyed in a previous video. Add to that the fact that shows a uh, definitive beginning, middle, and end. Let's talk about one. Serialized television. You said you're not a big fan of serialized television or movies. Um... Cop shows are not serialized television. They don't count. I've never seen a single... Oh, by the way, look, we're fighting <laughs> I've No, I've never, ever once seen a, uh, a cop show that would even come close. Except for maybe CSI. Um, Miami, I guess, pulled, a, pulled some shit with Grissom. But it just, it doesn't count. Like, I, I would even hazard... Or I would hazard to, to call things like... Um... To call, to call something like Fringe, for instance. Like, the vast majority of Fringe isn't a serialized show. It's an episode-by-episode episode show. So, like, like I'm talking your, uh, your Breaking Bad. Your Breaking Bad's, your AMC's The Killing. Um, actually, no. Pretty much anything AMC does is counts. Um, Game of Thrones, uh, definitely. Actually, you know what? Let's just look at my TV list. I don't think we've ever, have we, have we ever looked at my TV list. I don't think we have. Um, Alright, let's just have a quick look here. 
Um, American Horror Story. Um, I've, you know, an excellent, an excellent crazy show about shit, but, you know, the big C-ish, um, you know, Breaking Bad, I mentioned. Continuum? No, Continuum doesn't count. Continuum sort of, but not really. It's like, a, a lot of these shows, Fringe and Continuum are big ones, but they'll be like a self-contained episode, in Continuum's case a stupid one, in Fringe's case a, you know, a fairly decent one, and like, you know, 95% of that episode is... Oh man. Oh man, look at this. This guy, this guy just gives me a big boner with his um, whips. Oh man. Whips, love those. <laughs> um, no, but a lot of these, like a lot, like 95% of the show is just, you know, an episode, and then 5% of the show at the end is like, ooh, the ongoing plot gets a little bit of development, and that, I, for me, that doesn't count. It's gotta be something like, it's gotta be something like Game of Thrones, or whatever. Uh, Louie wouldn't count, but Louie is a special case, because Louie is an Louie is just great. Um, what else do we have? I don't think I really watch anything else. Oh, The Walking Dead, of course. The Walking Dead is great. Um, there's less than TV shows now. This is interesting. But, yeah, like, th those, are, those are what I mean when I say serialized TV, and you can't not be a fan. Well, I suppose you could, you could, but you can't... I don't think you can seriously be a fan of Spanish soap operas. Um, because they're serialized, and that they have a definitive beginning, middle, and end. Because a lot of these shows do. Like, we know that Game of Thrones is going to have an ending. Um, Walking Dead definitely doesn't, but... Um, we know that... We know that Breaking Bad's gonna have a definitive beginning, middle, and end. Um, like, we know that there's, there's a few other shows that are definitely gonna have a definitive beginning, middle, and end. Each season of American Horror Story does. And... Yeah. Oh, you know what? I think I just... I think I just, uh... No, never mind. Um, anyway. Spanish, Tucker and SAD continues to say about Spanish soap operas that they're melodramatic and as of later become as recycled and rehashed as the rest of North American television. But the fact that they have a uh, preset storyline and don't have writers digging shit up out of nowhere to keep up ratings makes them appear to stand stronger, if that makes sense. And you're just not watching the good, good TV. Just, you know, give some AMC shows a shot instead. Um, also, Tucker and SAD continues to say, I prefer a miniseries for the same reason of it having a definitive beginning, middle, and end. Um, no, you're just watching the wrong shows. There's so many great TV shows that it seems like you're just ignoring because cops shows are terrible. There's, you just gotta go look. Um, I found lately that the best way, or the, that Met, that Metacritic is a pretty good, um, has a pretty good hand. Like, there are shows that Metacritic likes that I don't. Um, I think Justified is one. Like, just they fucking just love Justified, and you know, I've watched two seasons of it, and I just don't get it. Um, but, like, you know, Enlightened, for instance, you know, that's, that's a pretty great show. Got cancelled, so you shouldn't watch it, because it has a, not a very satisfying ending, but... Christ. Like, there's just so much good TV out there, and just, Spanish soap operas. I can't see Spanish soap operas being... As, as, I can't see Spanish soap operas rivaling, um, like, uh, Louis, or... You know, Game of Thrones or Walking Dead, right? So that's what I'm saying. That's my opinion on that. What are you talking about anymore? Um, Dark Witness 88 um, finishes with, "Ah, oh, don't feel bad about crime because of video game either." Bioshock's two, Bioshock 2 is good ending. Hemi closes tears for some reason, as did Final Fantasy 8's ending. Uh, did I cry because of video game or was that TV? I don't remember. I guess it must have been a video game because you said. You said it, and I imagine you. you I imagine you know more about what I said in the video because you watched it. I was, you know, I just talked for like over half an hour, basically nonstop. Um, and you do tend to forget things, especially it's like I'm doing a podcast or something. It's hard, especially I'm doing it by myself. Maybe I should get someone else in here and we'll just chat about shit. Um, but, 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 but. Uh, I don't know. I feel like TV is a little bit better for that. Oh, Christ. Does anyone ever remember that episode of Deep Space Nine where um, the Visitor... Fuck. Fuck that episode. 
that episode is so like oh god for anyone who hasn't seen it um it's like this commander cisco crazy black guy and his son um cisco uh quote unquote dies or something but he's actually just in i don't know an alternate reality or he's kind of stuck out of time or whatever and he kind of appears near his son because they because the accident the accident of the cause does happen nearby um he appears near his son like first it's like every few days and then it's like every few months and then it's like every few years and then it's like every like 30 years and his son is just dedicates his entire life to just because he knows that his dad is going to appear he knows when he uh, he eventually figures out when and it's it's like it's just like there's a lot of like emotions that they kind of grab on in that fucking show i come out I, that fucking episode i always come out of it like like just bawling because it's so like oh it's just so meaty and it's the way it handles emotions and shit speaking of the way things handle emotions holy fuck this game is over majora's mask Chores mask. So good. Every time I play it, I have to get all the masks. I am so pissed that I forgot a um, heart piece, and I don't remember what heart piece it is. And I'm not gonna go check every single heart piece. Oh. oh. So this is the credits for Majora's Mask. This is over. Um, thanks for watching. I guess I could just leave the credits rolling because some interesting stuff happens. This is just sort of at all of these things that you helped make happen um but decide for me um we're down to max Payne. by the way max Payne, i actually have footage of max Payne already um but just because i've been playing it and i decided to just record it because i was playing it um, i missed the first little bit but i could probably re-record that or just leave it out um so Max Payne, like I'm, you know, I'm going to be playing that. So that'll be most most convenient for me. Max Payne, or Mother Three, or Wind Waker. Make a choice. Leave a comment. Um, yeah. So thanks for watching. I think my commentary will end now, and you get to enjoy the end of the uh, end of Majora's Mask. I'll start. Also, a Tarkinus, I guess. We'll, uh, we'll meet. We'll, we'll meet. We'll meet up later for uh, touching.